Hey everybody, welcome back to 12 Foot Chain. And yeah, this week we're gonna talk about Brown Sugar. What an epic, epic song from the Rolling Stones. Uh, recorded about 1969, very end of 1969. And uh, by this time, they are firmly sounding like the, the sort of second era Stones, you know, into the 70s that we all know and love. So we are gonna break down all the great guitar in this. And there's some very interesting stuff um, coming your way. So before we do that, if you haven't done so already, um, please click the subscribe button. Um, and if you like what you're seeing, click the thumbs up and ring the bell and it'll let you know when I'm dropping uh, content every single week. Okay, so uh, man, there's a lot in this song. Um, and uh, it pretty much epitomizes everything that's great about the Rolling Stones. I know I've said that a lot on some other videos that I've done, but this one probably is top of the heap or one of the top of the heap for me all right so there's basically three guitar parts that we're going to talk about today there's Keith Richards rhythm guitar part there is Mick Taylor's um, rhythm slash lead guitar part and then there's a very interesting acoustic that's going on in it um, we're going to talk about all three of those but let's start with Keith's part okay so according to the interwebs, um, there's, an, there's an interview with Jimmy Johnson, who was the guy that was the engineer on the session down in Muscle Shoals. And his res recollection is that Keith was playing an S a black SG. Now, I can't find pictures of him with a black SG, period. I see a white SG custom when he's out on tour later. Um, and, you know, just when I'm listening to it, it doesn't, it, to my ear, it doesn't sound like an SG. It sounds like a Les Paul. It sounds like a Les Paul on a rhythm pickup. Um, they're very close, but either way. So when you're getting Keith's tone, you want a, ideally, you want sort of a dual humbucker guitar. You want to set it to the rhythm guitar or the rhythm pickup section. And um, I would just max everything out. Supposedly, he was playing really overdriven into a into a uh, an old fender twin um but you know just generally when you listen to the sound it's overdriven and it's sort of on the darker side so you know tune your amp um to sort of get to that if you want to darken it up a little bit you can roll back on your tone on your guitar but you know somewhere in that ballpark is what you're what you're looking for okay before you do anything else, you need to tune your guitar to the open G tuning, all right? And there's lots of information on the web on what that is and how to do it. You know, your notes are D, G, D, G, B, and D. So you're, you're basically leaving strings two, three, and four alone. You're tuning down string six, five, and one, a whole step, two frets. Boom. And that gives you the open G tuning. And that allows you to play chords straight across. A lot of slide players use that tuning. Um, but when you just lay your finger across on any fret, you have a major chord. Right? Okay. So that's your tuning. Um, so there's basically, you know, there's a couple shapes um, that I'll put up here. Um, as I'm going through these parts. Um, and he kind of mixes and matches and alternates a little bit. It's never really the same every single time, which is great. I don't, that's how music should be, or rock and roll anyway. Um, okay, so where we're starting, um, basically the chords, most of the chords are in a sort of a C, F, and G structure loosely. Um, and uh, there's a couple others thrown in there too, but um, just for the ballpark of where you're at. So your opening riff is up here on 12. You're gonna lay your finger all the way across. Um, now, Keith later on, he just strung his guitar with five strings when he was doing this open G tuning. I don't know if he was doing that yet at this early point. Um, you certainly sort of don't play that low string at all, so you could 
just rip it off. Um, so you're going to lay your finger across on 12, and you're going to position your index and, I mean, your uh, middle finger and ring finger on uh, 13 and 14 on the B string, on the, you know, string two and string four, right? So you're going to alternate between open and laying those down, right? It sort of gives a, so that's a G. That's like a G sus, or you could think of it as a C um, with a G in the bass. But. So you're going to kick off your riff on the C position or the G sus position and pull off to the G. Nice and hard. And you're going to slide down to five and you're going to start with the straight across C and you're going to slam on the, the, sus, uh, the suspended after that. Right? So up here, down here. And as the rhythm goes on, he sort of, I think on the first one he does, and then on the others he's sort of more loose. He does an extra on there. But that's the riff. All right. Then the shift, it's going to go up three frets to um, what is basically an F chord. And here's where we're going to start laying on um, a lot of plus twos. So um, on this F position, he, a lot of time on what Keith is playing, he lays on that plus two, which is, I, I'm doing it with my pinky, two frets up um, on the G string, adding that note on there. You could also lay this one on there, but I think he's just doing this one. Then down to the C, you can do the same thing. Or you can add on the B string along with it. Throughout the whole song, he's sort of alternating between those. So sometimes he's doing, sometimes he's doing, and actually sometimes he's doing, right? So it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, mix them up. It'll all sound epic um, no matter which one you do, but do mix them up. All right, so coming back to your F, down to five. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go from the first fret to the third fret to the fifth fret, right? And slamming on those plus twos. And here's where you can add on the B string too. So it'll still sound great if you do just the plus twos. It still works. Um, so like I said, mix them up. So running through that again, eighth fret, F, fifth, first, third, So then it's going into the verses. Um, Keith is sort of bopping around loosely around the rhythm. And again, he doesn't do it the same every single time, but he's a little bit loose. So. play with that loosely, right? You know, you know, just just hit those positions, the frets, right? So you're on C, the C chord, which is on the fifth fret. Going up to an F. Or uh yeah, an F, sorry. C B flat C. 
And in those, you can do whatever little embellishments. Right, just sort of play it a little sparse. And then it goes to the chorus. Chorus is an open G. And he does it every single, pretty much every single time, he does a big. Da -na -na. He lets that ring out. And then what you hear on the record, I always thought he was playing it, but it's actually, you know, Mick Taylor's part, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But that little, that's not Keith. He's not playing that. What Keith is playing is. It's doing that. Maybe not with the low note, but. And then back into it. That's really, you know, rinse and repeat for Keith for the rest of the song. Um, the only thing sort of that he alters um, is on the outro. Um, you're just sort of bopping back and forth between G and C. You know, he goes up here to 12. Again. And then he goes down to open. He doesn't go up again, ever. He doesn't go back to 12 at all for the rest of the song. Um, and he does this little rhythm on the on the alternating between the open G with the sus and back to the C with the sus. <laughs> now I gotta think of what it is. Yeah. I'm hitting this for rhythm effect he doesn't he's not doing that but so he does that all the way to the out right you're just sort of doing that um, and I think it ends on a C That's it. That's Keith's parts. Um, all right. So let's talk about Mick Taylor's parts. All right. So Mick Taylor's parts. Um, he's got a little bit of a different sound. That same Jimmy Johnson interview where he was saying that Keith was playing a back uh, a black SG, which I'm sort of dubious on, um, says that he thinks that Mick was playing a Strat. And again, that just doesn't jive with my ear on what I'm hearing. I do see Mick play in SG a lot um, in that era. I don't know that I've got pictures that, that like, I don't know if there's actually any pictures of that session. If any of you know of the like definitive pictures of them playing whatever instruments they're playing on this actual session, please do send me links down below. Um, but um, to my ear, I actually, it sounds more like an SG to me, um, or another Les Paul. It, it sounds definitely more like, you know, the Gibson Humbucker family. Um, but, uh, okay, so Mick is also in open G. Um, and he's a little more clean um, on his settings. Not quite as dark, not quite as dirty um, as Keith is. Um, so it creates a nice sort of juxtaposition and Keith is panned all the way to one side and, and Mick is, is uh, Taylor is, is panned to the other side, which is cool. Um, the other thing that's cool about Keith's part, <laughs> the, the way they mixed it is his guitar is in one side, but the echo, the slap back, uh, is on the other side. Kind of weird if you have headphones, really listen to that. It's cool. You hear this, but it, but it. Anyway, I digress. 
Um, so mix parts while Keith is doing his. So he comes in, slides into five, uh, five uh, fifth fret on the fifth string, open D, and then three to five on D. And he sort of resolves on a little C. He's the one that comes in really hard um, on the very beginning, by the way. The... He's the one that's doing the da na na, it's not Keith. Um, but yeah, so he's up on the eighth fret, which I guess is a, that's actually an E flat. Well, that's out of tune. Um, but he mimics the same sort of chord shapes that we talked about on Keith's um, uh, Keith's parts um, during that section. So um, that's sort of the same. He's on his parts. He's hitting this. He's hitting that way more often, um, if not every time, almost every time. Um, so he's he's playing that part of the chord where, you know, sometimes Keith is just doing the, the plus two, I think. Um, I can hear it a lot more in mix playing um, when he's getting both of those strings. Okay, now on the rhythm parts that he's playing, a um, little more understated. So where Keith is hitting sort of full chords that we talked about, he is uh, doing more of the He's doing more of that sort of thing. Um, so his part is sounding like Sort of mimics the saxophone. I don't know who came first with that part or whatever, but the saxophone sort of is playing that same line dun -dun -dun -dun. chorus where Keith is coming in with the big um, he's not really doing that um, he's got to leave room for that riff that he's gonna do you know and this is the riff right so he's sliding up to four on the fifth string so not not up to what we did in the beginning the beginning we did so this one is so it's four on the fifth, open on the D, open on the G, and then slide into that G note on your D string and give it a good wiggle. Right? And then you finish off that lick with so all together. And then where Keith is closing it out with his big, right? Mick is just landing on that C. So all together it's, whoops. So all together it's, Is pretty much the rest of mixed parts um, going all the way through so the only the parts that are sort of he starts to stray from it is during the outro um, so for the first couple measures of that outro where it's going back and forth between G and C he's still doing the typical riff Still 
doing that. All right. And then I can't remember exactly how many uh, times you go around. Then he hits that little lead that you hear. That's sort of the signal that we're getting to the end. Um, and it's based off of the, you know, the Chuck Berry riff. You know, that we've heard. But we're tuned in open G, so we can't sort of bar our finger straight across. We have to add uh, two frets up on the high E string. And then we can, but we can still bend, it still fits nicely. Right? So we're gonna alternate one on the riff between the, I'm gonna call it the G position down here, where you're, uh, you know, third fret on the B string, fifth fret on the E string, and you've got your two fingers lined up on four and five on your G string to, to do your bend. So he starts with. Whoops, he starts with. Then he slides up to the C position. Then on that fourth last one, he first hits it the normal. And then you just take your finger off and you do your normal r rock and roll riff that you would do, but it sounds different now because you're catching that seventh, right? So that last one that he does sounds like this. And that's it. Love the way that sounds. So that's all that is. So that last little riff that he does, it goes like this. I'm going to call this the G position. Um, you have your index finger on three, your pinky on five on the E string. Um, you have your two other fingers lined up on your G string on four and five because you're going to be doing that bend, right? But it's going to sound like this. And then you're going to repeat the exact same thing sliding up to the C position. You know, if that was your normal C chord, right? You're grabbing that note two frets up and you're bending here. Back to the G. Now the last one, your first, the first hit is is that, but then you pull your finger off, and uh, you're gonna get a really great um, seventh sound. Um, so because you pull your finger off, that's what that is left when you bar your finger. So now it sounds like this. And that's the ending riff of the song that we all know, right? That's it. So the final and last sort of secret weapon of this uh, song is is an acoustic guitar. Um, and what it is, is it's a standard tuned six string guitar. I um, believe it's capoed up on three, but it is a Nashville tuned guitar. Now what's a Nashville tuned guitar? Well, if you have a, think of it, if you have a 12 string, this is a 12 string. Um, 12 string guitars have octaves on the first or the top four strings. They're strings six through four. They have octaves of one another. And then the last two strings are unison strings. So 
all a Nashville tuned guitar is, is the low octaves pulled off and the unison, uh, one of the pairs of the unison strings pulled off. So what you're left with are just the higher octaves of the low E, low A, low G, or D, and, and, low, and G. Um, so, but it's a very interesting and cool sound. Um, there's lots of videos out on the web about Nashville tune. Some people call it high strung um, or Nashville tuning guitar, but that's what it is. Um, so you get higher octaves on the um, strings six through four. So, so from there, it's just you're transposing the different chord shapes accordingly, right? So um, a C, when you're capoed at three, is, an, is that A position. An F is a D position. A G is an E position, right? And you got your, uh, what is that? E flat is a C. Anyway, I won't go through all of those, um, but that's how you get the. triplets um, you know the not on everyone but a lot of them so if you are inclined and if you have an acoustic guitar to layer in on your performance um, even if you can't do a Nashville tune um, and just have a standard six it still sounds great but you just want to sprinkle in those triplet strums sort of secret weapon for the rest of the song going all the way through. It sort of mimics the maracas that you hear, the, you know, that's going on. Um, that comes in sort of towards the end, really builds it. Um, but that sort of triplet rhythm is happening with the acoustic guitar all the way through. And that's all I got to say about that. All right, what'd you think? That's Brown Sugar. Um, God, such a great song. Um, if you like what you saw, by the way, um, click like. Um, if you haven't done so already and want to hear more, click subscribe and ring the bell and we'll let you know exactly when the next one is going to drop. I usually release one every single week, usually towards the end of the week. Leave me a comment what you think about this. Did you learn anything new? Um, also leave me a comment if you have a song that you want me to try and um, I would love to be able to do one that you'd want to hear. You can leave that in the comments or you can send me an email. The link is below in the description, all right? Okay, so until next week, everybody, take care.